sun is uh, my strongest source of inspiration. And if you look at it, it's not only a giant nuclear reactor we are running around the year, it's beauty. It's dream of photons all over the earth and it's creating everything we have around us, not just technically. This is sensitive, this is beauty, this is art and all possibilities for life on the earth, for humans, for plants, is inside. And we can have wonderful life by using it, only we must be clever enough to really understand the possibilities and then to translate it into our daily life. That's what I think the sun is. We are on the brink of a new era, the solar age. The sun radiates 15,000 times more energy to the earth than what humanity uses. It is the challenge of our time to use it and to make it available to all. Motivation to develop uh, solar power village uh, is caused by a lot of travels I did in sunny countries, mainly in Africa. In Africa, you can see on the flatland, to speak in the villages, the misery especially of the women walking up to 40 kilometers per day, collecting the last remaining woods for cooking, having to work under an abundant and rich energy stream of the sun. So coming out of technology, having devoted a lot of time to develop methods to extract out of this precious and wonderful energy stream uh, technologies just to help to avoid the works for these women. This was a motivation to create Solar Power Village. Worldwide, the current centralized energy supply leads to tensions, environmental and climate catastrophes and oppression. Entire regions and countries that are under occupation, such as Palestine for example, are thus completely dependent on the benevolence of the rulers. Every cell of this plant embed a perfect solar power station. In complete contrast what humans are doing, digging in coal, building huge, huge central power stations, going into this philosophy of the nature and to continue in a technological way means decentralization and it has to mean decentralization because if we don't do this we never will have the chance to get, go in autonomous systems for villages and regions. In order to realize effective decentralized solutions concrete models of peaceful societies which encompass ecology, technology and social design are vital. Creating models of peace does mean that we try to find societies which are able to survive in a self-sufficient way, creating ecological systems, creating a technology, for example, the solar energy, and then mainly creating new forms of living together. The technological core of these concrete models is formed by the Solar Power Village. The first prototype is now being built in Tamira, the Peace Research Center in Portugal. Jürgen Kleinvector explains how it works. The central idea behind a Solar Power Village is a first technical example how to learn from nature, multifunctionality because we are not just producing only hot oil for cooking 24 hours or uh, driving our Stirling engine to make electricity or cold. At the same time, we are producing a perfect microclimate, a microclimatic environment of a greenhouse, perfect for plant growth. Let me explain a little bit. The lens we can see here is a selector. 
it cuts out of this radiation field the photons or the radiation frequencies which are not required by the plants and turns them out into heat, into hot oil here. Optical lenses concentrate the direct part of this radiation into focal lines and transform it to the energy uh, form you need. But the lenses also have another property. They let through the so-called diffuse part of the radiation. This part of the radiation coming out of the blue sky hemispherically from all directions. This is scattered radiation in the atmosphere. And looking to the semi-shadow on the ground here, this is the diffused radiation. In Tamira, Jürgen Kleinvector's technology is being further developed. It is the first one-on-one -on -one model of the solar power village. One of the students, Fabian Deppner, explains how it works. I'm standing here in the first model of the solar power village and from where we will later conceive um, a bigger one that is uh, projected for around 50 people. The cooking works very simple. The oil is heated up to around 200 degrees or hotter. Then it is stored in a special storage tank from where it can be used later during the night time or during days where it's not hot enough. From where it flows into a special oven. Basically it has a double walled pan where it flows through the space in between and therefore heats up the food that we want to cook. <laughs> 